ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Prominence Poker. We ended up in a tournament. I am super excited about that. We're not starting off with a good hand. Actually, let's just double check. Okay, everything's going good. Excellent. All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. We did end up getting into a tournament. Super duper happy about this. I do not like my hand. Uh, so here we are in Prominence Poker. Um, it is just before 4 a.m. my time on a Wednesday. This is absolutely ludicrous that a tournament is happening right now. This never happens. So I'm super excited. Um, if you watched my last poker episode, which I don't know exactly how long ago that would have been posted because I wanted to kind of break this up. I want to kind of break this up just a little bit because I don't have super high hopes that these game, the playing poker is going to be super eye-catching for a lot of people. But I figured we're in a tournament. We got into a tournament. Why the heck not play a tournament? Tournaments roughly take about an hour. I figured that would be a that's a good amount of time for an episode. So here we are. Nine and a five, not a good hand. Now, in the last poker episode I did, I was talking about how, um, I honest, honestly, I love playing with women in poker, but I always find if you're playing with a woman when it comes to poker, you need to keep extra close attention to her because nine times out of ten, if a woman's sitting at a poker table, she's there for a reason. I'm not saying, oh, and I would have had three of a kind. Damn, that sucks. But I'm not saying that women are just usually better players than men. What I'm saying is that most men don't think women are better players. But women have an advantage over men because, you know, guys like looking at women. So a lot of times they're looking at the woman and not what she's doing, not how she's playing. So that's a huge, that is, you know, that's a plus for women. So women, if you're out there and you're watching this and you're sitting there going, you know, I kind of like to play poker. Definitely do it. Don't go right to the casino right now. Like, you know, learn how to play. Learn to actually strategize. Maybe even purchase a couple of poker books. You know, there's plenty of online tutorials, too, on YouTube and whatnot. On, you know, proper strategies. How to kind of calculate your odds. That kind of thing. What did he raise? 500? Okay. We'll call on 500. Just because we got that king. It's not it's still not sitting on a great hand, but eh, we'll see what happens. And we got not just a pair, we got two pair. That is good. But we're not gonna play it as though we are we are good. Because I'm thinking they probably either got the king or the queen. They're sitting, they're thinking they're sitting pretty good. Now, as long as they don't have pocket pairs of anything, we're going to do just a little baby bet. Nope. Yeah, 600. 
little baby bat. So, that guy's got a very short afro and a beard. Okay, so we're still sitting on two, two of a kind. That's very good for us. We're going to do another little bet. Just a thousand of it. Just wanting to egg people. Yeah. There we go. Oh yeah, they do have like happy hour, fight club, that kind of thing. Basically, that means that the whatever item you have gives you a bit more of an extra boot, boost. So there we go. I just won an extra 1,500 in chips. So even if I lose, I still am walking away with 1,500 in chips. Which is not my buy-in, but, you know, it's nice to know that you're at least walking away with something. And Ace-4 is not terrible, so we're going to call an Ace-4. It's not great, but you have the possibility for the low-end straight. And, of course, you got an Ace, you know. Aces are always nice. The problem with aces is if somebody doesn't have an ace and they see an ace on the board, a lot of people run from them. Which is why, if you watched the last episode, you know, tens are good. See, now we have an ace on the board. So, we got two pair again. But we're just going to check to make it look like we don't have anything super strong. Uh oh, that's not fun. Let's try to see if we can make people think. Yeah, we'll do a pot bet. We'll bet the pot. So we basically tripled the pot now. Hoping they don't have the eight. We'll do another 500 bet. See what they do. Looks like they're gonna call it fold. Okay. You made the correct call. <laughs> I'm wondering what, what they had. See if they muck their cards. They don't. It tells me maybe they had a four, maybe. Oh, that guy's leaving. Alright, so we're at least not gonna be in last place. So, ooh, 2-6, that's bad. Yeah, we're just gonna fold right out of that. I said fold right out of that. I just realized I did not do what is tradition and fill, refill the, uh, refill the table. So I wanted to take care of that. We had one last person to do that for, so not not terrible, but you know. And just as I thought, we would have had nothing. So we made a good play. Now, of course, with playing poker, my brain, oof. That is a good hand, possibly, for somebody. Three sevens on the board. And a ten. And if anybody has a ten. She's probably trying to make it look... That you're not bet If she doesn't have the seven... If she has the seven, she's trying to make it look like she doesn't have the seven. Because that's a very weak bet. Especially having 7.8k. No, I would have had, like, a full house. If she has the 10, though, that was probably a good bet. Hoping she mucks her cards. Muck your cards? Nope. She could have been bluffing, too. But with a weak bet like that... I mean, sometimes I'll make a weak bet to make it seem like I have nothing great. Just to see who is willing to stick a, you know, stick around, put their money where their mouth is kind of thing. Anyway, 
playing poker. Uh, you know what? That's good enough to see the to see the flop at least. Um, makes me think of Vegas. And when I think of Vegas, there are three people predominantly that I think of when I think of Vegas. Technically four, but there's three acts that I think about predominantly. Penn and Teller, of course. 350, that'll take out my decimal point. But we'll call it. Um, Penn and Teller, of course. I do absolutely love Penn and Teller. Celine Dion, because she's been famous for playing Vegas for eons now. Eons upon eons. I'm going to fold out of this one. And last but not least, another one who's been playing Vegas for eons upon eons upon eons, Carrot Top. Now, something that, like, a lot of people kind of crap on Carrot Top. He's actually received a little bit of love over the past few years, which I feel is well-deserved. Um, I would was not a huge fan of Muscly Carrot Top. Because, for me, personally... Personally, the only muscly ginger there should be is Seamus from the W from wrestling, and I do I do legitimately like Seamus. You know, Sami Zayn's pretty damn good too. I'm not gonna lie about that, but he's not nearly as muscly as Seamus is. He's definitely got more energy, I, I would say. I'd be willing to say, you know, in an actual match, it would basically come down, between the two of them, it would definitely come down to um, brawn over endurance because Sami Zayn has just so much straight-up energy. But, you know, personal opinions, that kind of thing. I don't... I couldn't tell you who would actually win in a fight. I don't even know off the top of my head if they've ever had a match together. Well, a 10 would be super nice right about now. What'd you bet? 250? I'll call 250. A 10 would give us a straight. 10? No. We'll do a little baby bet just to see if we can kind of push him out. 250. Oh, he called it. And he had a queen. I'll clap on that. I was just trying to push him out. That's all I was trying to do. But I'm still in first place, so that's good. But yeah. Are you guys actually... I'm curious, because I don't think this uh, episode... As small as my audience is, I don't. I think this is going to reach even less people. But for those of you who are actually watching this, are you a fan of wrestling? I, I've kind of gone through phases in my life where I was a fan, I wasn't a fan, I was a fan, I wasn't a fan. Uh, I think I mes mentioned on the channel, although who knows if anybody watched that episode, um, that I am a fan of Mick Foley. He was actually the catalyst that actually got me into wrestling. Because of two primary reasons. And he was actually the catalyst for me doing more extreme stuff in my act. Such as my fire eating, my human blockhead, that kind of thing. And, uh... Part of that reason was because there's no way I'd be able to do what he did. He shouldn't have even been doing most of the stuff that he was doing. And he's pretty much admitted that. And, you know, a lot of it comes from hindsight because now there's a lot of talk about um, micro concussions. Micro concussions have been a thing in sports and stuff like that. It was really football that kind of shed a lot of light onto it. And he was doing stuff that was just jostling his brain repeatedly. And, uh, man. 
the amount of damage that guy must have done to his body. The crazy thing is, is that even with all the head injuries that he suffered, he has still not only managed to write multiple books, but at least on two separate occasions, possibly more. He, uh... He's ended up on the uh, New York Times bestseller list. So, my thought is, is that if that's his, you know, that's his level now after suffering all the head injuries and stuff, man, where would he be without that? We're sitting on pretty good cards, though. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I remember. I'm pretty sure at the time he was wrestling. Pretty sure it was either Cactus Jack. Hmm. A6 suited, we'll call that. He was either wrestling as Cactus Jack or Mankind. And I just remember I went to a friend's place, he was watching it, and I just see a guy just absolutely covered in blood. Just covered in blood. 10k. On an A6 suited. Alright. I mean, I'm the top. I have the, I'm the chip leader. So even if everybody else calls, I'll still at least have a little bit of money. So, hopefully I win. And she's called. All right, it's a three on three. Ooh, fee. All right, let's see a bunch of hearts, or at least an ace. Nothing? No, I got a six. Can we get another six? Six or an ace, six or an ace, six or an ace. Damn. Damn. Well, we're definitely at least going to be in the top four. I am now in the bottom. So if we want to win this, we either got to play super hardcore or super smart. And the first thing it gives us is an ace nine. So I want to at least see the flop. with an ace nine because if we can get a pair of aces or a pair of nines that's going to be super nice neither of those things happened so we'll check I don't think we're in a good position she might be folding she raised we definitely are not going to call that we already made a call we've made two calls now that we shouldn't have so although we would have been one card away from a straight seven eight nine ten we only would have needed a jet oh and there's a bunch of sevens on the board so really glad that we backed out of this one yeah, we only would have needed uh, either a jack or a six. And we would have been sitting good. I'm have the f I'm having the feeling that he's trying to make it look like he's got the seven. She might be doing that too. Is she going to show her cards? I don't think she had the seven, to be completely honest. She was playing really weak to start with, and then all of a sudden played real hard. Granted, once in a while I'll do that too. Yeah, he definitely didn't have the seven. So that's fine. The thing I do, I will say, I like about this game, eight jacks, not terrible, is that they kind of have a weird attention to detail. So if you look right on the left of the dealer there, there's a little slot there. That is actually a uh, that's a cash slot. So if you're
playing and you're, you know, you either give the dealer a cash tip or you want to buy some chips off of them, you hand that and so that there's not a bunch of money on the table. That's not what I wanted to see at all. We're not going to call that. Um, they can just literally put that, push that down. There's usually some sort of like, it kind of looks like a dough knife would be the best way I could describe it to sh shove the money down there. And uh, there's either a safe or in super high-end casinos and stuff like that, they'll, they'll actually have like a vacuum system. So I'm big blind so I can just check. Um, they'll have a vacuum system where it all goes to like one big main safe. So just a little interesting side note on uh, playing poker. Uh, we got a pair of fives, which isn't terrible. Mm, we hypothetically, as long as we don't want to see any more diamonds, okay? We don't want to see any more hearts either. Uh, I was going to say, hypothetically, we have a chance at a straight, but we definitely don't anymore. And we're not, considering it's a lower pair on the board, we definitely don't want to keep playing when people are betting money. And there we go. We would have had a pair of fives and that would have been it. So. But yeah, I was talking about Carrot Top. Um, I, I Legitimately, I do enjoy Carrot Top. Out of the prop comics, there's a handful that I do enjoy. Um, his stuff is actually... And the, honestly, him being in Vegas is kind of a honest honestly a good thing especially for him because according to what i've heard when he would tour around he'd have like seven or eight buses and trailers and things uh cruising around with him just to carry all his props which seems kind of weird like why would you ca i don't you know all those props can't be relevant but I guess at the same time, because one, like, one of the props that I remember of his was uh, he made these shoes that had little stilts on them. And this, this was for when Tom Cruise got married. Ha 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 ha. He, you know, short joke. And that's fine. But that being said, is that a prop that you're really going to carry around for however long it ends, you know, like... Are you, you're not going to do that joke every night. You're probably not even going to do that joke every other night. You know, how often are you actually going to do that particular joke? And the filing system, he must have had to make sure all of his props were, you know, where they needed to be kind of thing. Must have been absolutely insane. Like, I don't know how we would have been able to do that without, like, a massive Google Docs sheet. You know, like, this is all for celebrity jokes and, you know, and then, you know, what happens if something happens and it's like, you know, something relevant happens and you're like, oh, I can go into, you know, my container number, you know, 120 and just be like, yeah, you know, I, you know, it's not the prop, it's not the reason I made the prop, but... You know, I uh, that would be one question that I would all honestly love to ask the guy is like, how did you have that organized, and why would you travel with that much stuff? Because I, like, why would you like? Granted, it that that particular item not a very big prop. Okay, I un you know I know that I get it. Cool. It's not going to take up a whole lot of space. Some of his props definitely took up a ton of space. Oof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Alright, well, we're in the top three. Like I said, this only, it's only been about a half hour, so... We're sitting 
mean, we're still short stack, but we're sitting in the top three, so that's not a bad thing. If we can at least get, hmm, 8-5, eh? We've been on a bad losing streak, so I would like to at least see the flop. This game does have an algorithm, and it's a weird one where it seems like the guy who's losing somehow will end up winning, a, just winning randomly. And you kind of feel like a dunce if you fold and you're seeing, like, I would have had three of a kind, or I would have had a straight, or I would have had a flush, or, you know, something like that. So, I mean, we're seeing a lot of clubs here. What's he, be oh, he's betting 900. No. No. At 900, I'm, I'm thinking, and especially with her calling, I'm thinking somebody has already got clubs, and they might even have the straight. Or, the, sorry, not the straight, the flush. Although, I would have had a straight. Yeah, I would have had a straight. Granted, a flush beats a straight, so... Oh, is this going to go to an all-in? No. Okay. Two pair, nine, six. Of course, I should have stayed in. But again, the game's algorithm is so wonky, it's kind of one of those, I could have won it. It was the last card, but... Eh, it's fine. It's fine. Now she only has about ten... Just over 10,000, so... We're sitting... Ooh. Come on, bet me. You know what? Let's just do it. We're either coming in third or we're winning some chips back. Damn it. Really, you had to have pocket eights. Well, let's see if the mark of the beast comes for me. Seriously? <laughs> nope, no mark of the beast for me. Ah, well. It happens. Let's spectate this for a little bit. I just, I'm really curious who's, who's going to win. I at least won my buyback or my buy-in because that's what kind of happens when you pay, when you hit third place. You don't usually get quite what you uh, paid in, but because I got that fifteen hundred, I th think I've broken even on this one. So you know, not not terrible. Anyway, carrot top. I was talking about carrot top. Um, but yeah, he was he was a punching bag for a lot of years. Like everybody made fun of carrot top. Um, and even when I'm 99% sure that it was the roast of Flavor Flav, everybody was taking pot shots at the guy. Everybody. And, like, some of them, like, I know it's a roast, and the idea is, you know, you're roasting somebody. But, man, that, even that roast was just kind of like, like, they seemed like they were extra mean towards the guy. You know, in my opinion. And the simple fact of the matter is, is that being a prop comic, I, I wouldn't be a prop comic. Even though I am a magician, and the line between being a comedian magician, which I don't even count myself really as a magician or a comedian magician, I'm more of a comedian who just happens to know a few tricks. But... For all intents and purposes, comedian magician. I'm a variety act. The line between comedian magician and prop comic is so, so thin. You know, at least in my in my opinion, it is incredibly thin between the two. And for all intents and purposes. You know, people crap on prop comics, and I think a lot of it has to do, in all honesty, with Gallagher. Now, 
I'm not going to lie about that. He has had, he definitely has had some jokes that have made me laugh. I won't lie about that. Because, I, you know, I'm a staunch believer in not lying. Even, you know, I'll be honest about, you know, whatever comedian. You ask me my opinion on them, and it's either, you know, I like their material, I don't like the person, I like the person, I don't like the material, I like the person and the material, you know. Oof, this is, uh... Nice. Wow. She's... I think she's chip leader. Nope, not quite. Okay. Um... You know... I will say, he, he had some... He had some jokes... There was a video I actually found on YouTube, you can look it up if you want to, where it was uh, Gallagher, greatest comedian of all time. And he was, you know, he was making language, jo language jokes about English kind of thing, about how screwed, and it is, it is screwed up. No, this isn't one of his jokes, but this is the example that I've always used is like, when it, think about plurals. You have a house, you have multiple houses, Houses. You have a mouse. More than one mouse, you have mice. You have a moose. You have more than one moose. You have moose. You have a goose. You have more than one goose. You have geese. You know... English is English is messed up, and this is also the reason why I will not make fun of anybody who has a heart like who's learning how to speak English, because it I could have used that because English is an incredibly annoying and frustrating language to learn. You know, my grandfather actually said one thing, and it was uh, it was something about that, and that's if you're gonna make fun of somebody for not being able to speak English make sure your English is perfect. And very, very, very few people's English is perfect. And the people who will make fun of somebody for having an accent or not quite having a full grasp of the English language, they're the ones that have the hardest time with the language. So if, if you're out there and you're you were learning or you know somebody who's learning the language or you are learning the language and maybe you're cruising around on YouTube to try and get a handle on it. Don't feel bad when people make fun of you. It happens to everybody. You're all good. You'll get a handle of it. It's just going to take some time. But anyway, going back to whole, the whole Gallagher thing. Gallagher made a lot of enemies when it came to the world of comedy because he had this... Ooh, we might see somebody leaving now. Nope. He had this huge resentment towards comedians who were doing better than him. Because, of course, he was primarily traveling around with, like, fairs and stuff like that. Because, you know, he's a guy who smashed watermelons with hammers. Of course, he's basically a fairground act. You know, that's especially, like, a smaller town type affair. I would totally see... You know, I could totally see something like that there. You know, a lot of times it's like older bands that weren't like super successful, but they had some notoriety, they had some success, you know. You'll hear their name and you'll kind of be like, oh yeah, I, I think I remember. They had like that one hit and maybe you'll Google search it or something like that. Of course, at that point, you know, there wasn't really a Google and stuff like that to draw from, especially not when it came to smartphones and stuff. But you get what I'm saying is that, you know, a lot of times that stuff is more like smaller bands that, you know, they had some success, you know, maybe not necessarily just one hit wonders, but they weren't like chart toppers. You know, so I could see that kind of thing. You're not going to see, you know, top tier comedians like maybe 
when he was starting out, you might have seen a guy like George Carlin. Or you might have seen a guy like uh, Jay Leno or, you know, stuff like that. You know, in their early, 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 early days doing that kind of stuff. But that would not have been, like, that was probably, if they ever did that, I... To my knowledge, neither of them ever did that. I actually don't even know a lot of comedians that did tour around with fairs and stuff. But that would have been just a kind of a blip on the radar. You know, something that it happened, but... How worth of it... How worth talking about it is. That kind of situation. So... When it comes to him, he was taught. He talked so much crap about so many different comedians. He effectively t talked crap about all comedians because one thing he talked about was uh, bringing notes up on stage. That one I understand, especially if you're a professional comedian. However, if you're trying out new material, if you're trying some, you know, if you're just in a club setting kind of thing, fine. Bring some notes with you. You know? I do my best to not carry notes up on stage with me. Granted, most of my notes are on my phone. Because I don't... Usually I don't write jokes down. Usually I don't even... Like, text them down into like a notepad or anything. I actually record them verbally. Two reasons. Number one, when I get inspiration for a joke... I'm in one of two settings... Either I'm in that weird kind of half asleep, half awake period. Not a great time to be texting at that point. Or I'm doing something where I'm using most of my focus on it. And there's just that little blip in the back of my brain that just goes, Hey, remember when this happened? And I go, Oh, that'll I can write a joke about that. Or that can become a part of another joke. And i got to remember it. So I'll just pull out my phone. And if I'm in a situation where I can't record it. Like it's really busy at work or something like that. Um, I'll just make like a quick note on a notepad. And just kind of be like, got to remember this for later. And I'll do a quick, you know, quick dirty little bullet point kind of situation. But nothing... You know, I won't go into full exposure, which is, I almost like doing that way better. Because it kind of gives your mind, like, now that you've written it down, you probably won't forget it. Forget exactly what the joke is. You know, and there are so many jokes that I know I that have crossed my mind. And I'll be like, oh, I gotta, I gotta write a joke about that. And by the time I get a chance to write it down or anything, it's gone. So having a phone is fantastic for if you're a comedian because it gives you that opportunity. Oops, somebody might be going home. Pocket threes versus queen four. Neither are super great hands, but neither are bad hands either. So let's see what happens. She may actually get the straight. She only needs an eight or a three, but then the three would also give him... All right. Well, that answers who's the winner of the tournament. Fantastic. That was a good game. Good ending. Would have been better if I won, but, you know. I didn't gain anything, but, eh, it's okay. No loot cases or anything like that, but, Oh, we actually made a little bit of money because I think we were under 400000 before we went into that tournament. So we did make a little bit of money. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end this episode here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, sorry. Hang on one second. <clears throat> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, everybody in between and beyond. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And uh, always remember... Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Chances are you should probably stay away from most of the things that I would do. But until next time, take care.